Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, I let's bring them on. Okay. Well, Dan, I appreciate. It. I'm not sure if you're going to be on when Tim is still here, but let's bring them up. Yeah, I can hang for a couple minutes. Okay. No, I'm home. Oh God, there he is. What's there up, Tim? he is. Hey. <laughs> We got you. Are you watching this madness? Uh, I am now. <laughs> Looks like I'm tuning in at the, the right time. He's like at about seven minute pace, it seems, and uh, nine nine hours in. That's proper. Can, um, he, can he hear us or did he mute us? He can hear us every once in a while. Nicole's doing some stuff with him, and I know if we have a specific question, he opens up a little window sometimes that we can chat. Okay. Um, and He's in his uh, zone. He's he seems to be in his zone. I mean, he kind of got to be, right? Seriously, I we you know to honor him. I almost went on a treadmill today. <laughs> that's Brad's bold. That is a that's quite an accomplishment. Hey, Pam. Hey, how are you, Eric? I see Pam Smith as well right here. So we've got Pam and Tim and Dan on. Fantastic, Pam. Have you been watching this as well? I've had it going while I've been going about my daily stuff today. Just yeah, it's been amazing to watch. It's uh, it's it's something. That he, he has slowed down on bathroom breaks. I've been commenting all day on on bathroom breaks. My wife is getting tired of knowing when and when not Zach is going to the bathroom, but he's slowed down a bit um, in bathrooms. But his pace seems to have picked up a bit. I would guess he, he has slowed down on how frequently he's going to the bathroom, yeah. or yeah. on how long it takes him to go to the bathroom. Very <laughs> very good distinction. How how often he's going to the bathroom? It okay. seemed like he was hitting it quite a bit at at, at the start. But he's uh, he's doing. Has he been? Well. He's negative splitting the bathroom breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Is it NASCAR pit stop style? And uh... I don't I don't know I don't I don't. I, that's one thing we don't have is like a blueprint of his house to show you know if he has to run down the hallway or anything like that. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, but I am I am I'm fascinated with this. Tim, how far have you gone on a treadmill? Have you ever? Have you ever? I've never been on a treadmill. Is that right? Yeah. Like not in physical therapy. Come on. In, PT you have, um, in a gravity in a gravity boot or whatever so i think i have run 20 miles on a treadmill before that um when i was when i was younger and i was afraid of cold snowy conditions i hopped on one when i was in trucky one winter but since i don't know i would say in the last seven years the longest i've ever run on a treadmill is like six miles not even in the uh what's it, the gravity what's it called the gravity boot the uh the the sweaty alter, diaper uh, the alter, alter G. G. No, we don't have one. Um, I have tested that uh, years prior, but in our clinic, we don't own one. They, they look, they do look like a, it's a bit of an investment. It, I think so. It is. It's, yeah. it's properly expensive, but if Alter G is listening, they want to demo one for me. I'd be happy to do it. You know, <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm sure we have like uh, Nordic track is our sponsor here. So uh, that's true, but that's, that's that seems to be more of a therapeutic device, doesn't it? The 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 uh, the, the the sweaty diaper machine. Uh, no, it actually can be used for training as well to offset just how much pounding. So if you want to have, you know, it's a form of cross training. You know, it, instead of just hopping on the bike yeah. or an elliptical, you could do you know partial body weight running for your second yeah. run of the day. Pam, how about you? What's the furthest you've been on a machine? Um, at one time, only 20 miles, but uh, this past December, I did the Dreadmill 100 mile challenge where you get 48 you? hours to complete that. And that truly was dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I actually had it in my mind that I would do five 20 mile runs, 20 and break it up over the 48 hours. And I never made it past 17 miles at one time. So I had, uh, I did 17 and then I'd take a break and then I'd get back on for seven or eight or so like that. And um, yeah, I, I got real bored. And a lot of people have commented on uh, Zach staring at the blank wall here. I mean, I was doing mine with a TV screen in front of me and watching movies and I still yeah. was bored, so. <laughs> and that surprises me. I mean, you, you, you've had a lot of success in, on, on, on track alters and timed events where you know, it's a similar level of, of, of boredom. Um, but the treadmill is just too much. Yeah, I think that there's a lot more stimulation going on around the track. I know people uh, see the track as like just this one uh, vision that you're seeing, the 400 meters or whatever, but Big you're still party. seeing the, 
the big place that, yes, all the people around you and what's going on. And I think I spend a lot of my time thinking about lap splits. And you, you mentioned um, having a hard time remembering when you need to eat and stuff like that. And so having those kind of things to focus on, little details of the race actually occupy my mind. Whereas when I'm on the treadmill, I'm just staring at the seconds ticking by <laughs> and that somehow yeah. gets to me. Yeah. yeah. Do, do uh, Tim or, or Pam, do, would seeing all the metrics in front of you right in front of you oh. in your vision affect how you're how you're running or is that is that a positive or a negative horrible yeah, i hate right? it like yeah. like when i do on the run on the treadmill first thing i do is throw like my yeah. t-shirt or the towel over the face yeah um i can't stand looking at it yeah yeah i'm yeah. pretty much the same way i don't want to see the seconds ticking and i think i mean zach's been running at a really even heart rate so that's probably reassuring for him but if i started to see little spikes here and there i think that would uh, be more negative for me than than positive in any way. I'm surprised he's not covering his screen. Has he at all, Eric? I I don't think so. I've been watching him all day. I mean, now granted, he's on two machines, but I haven't seen him change anything. And he's 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 using it. And he's interfacing with it a lot. How often is he switching? Uh, it seems like every time he goes to the bathroom. Okay. Um, and that's that's my guess. I haven't seen him. He's on the further one right now. I haven't seen him switch in a while. Um. And I know one of the reasons is they're trying to keep the machines, they've never been stress tested at this pace for this long. So they're trying to make sure everything's gonna, gonna stay cool. It would, it would suck to have you know, something go haywire right now. Um, yeah. and, and as I think as Jeff Burns was saying earlier, we were talking about uh, Jeff, you know, as a, as, a, as a body mechanics guy, would want the machine set at slightly different speeds, just a tiny bit difference, just to give them a little bit of variation um, so it's not just the exact same. And I, I don't know if Zach's doing that, doing that or not. And, yeah. You know, I would, I would hope so. It, uh, I mean, that's, and that's one of the reasons that people find running on treadmills so difficult is that you are fixed to the belt speed where yes. if we're out running over ground, you're varying your pace constantly, you know, not only if it's just flat, but like, you know, just your effort, it's constantly changing and that your perceived effort's gonna you know, be a lot less. Looks like, looks like we got an update. Uh, the music is working again. Uh, Zach just hit 75 miles in two seconds shy of nine hours. And uh, you see that dot, that uh, dashed blue line is, uh, that one right there is, uh, He's right, right exactly where he's been, right in between Dave Proctor's record he set last year and Zach's record he set about nine months ago as well. Uh, looks like he's doing great. That's right how it, right it's 12 hours. Pace. See what we got here. 149 beats a minute, so he's gone up slightly. He's been between like 142 and 148 for, for nine <coughs> hours, and he's gone up slightly and 701 pace for, for nine hours. Jeez, man. Um, and we've got the other charts right there that are going to show Dave's average pace and everything. He's just doing great. I mean, there's no need to, no need, no need to check it out. Looks like we got to got to lose. Dan is going to step off, and we're going to have uh, Tim and Pam on for a bit. Tim, you can bail pretty early, and um, and we're going to keep talking about uh, Zach doing this crazy stuff. So Dan from Koros, I appreciate. Thank it. you, thank you so much. Take care, guys. Thanks, Dan. Take care. See you, Dan. And Tim, Tim, to what, what you were saying, I mean, we've, we've been talking about this all day and it's, it's this, it's the, the, the mental, the, the mental change between having a pace put upon you when you set it in at seven minute pace versus being out in the open and saying, I'm feeling kind of bad right now. I'm going to slow down a little bit. And then, you know, getting yourself back up. It's a very different uh, mental and, and pain threshold mindset. It, it definitely is. Yeah. It, um, that's, one reason I just do not enjoy running on the treadmill. So it's Pam. Yeah. No, would you, would you, would you prefer to have that, that, that ability to say, I'm going to be running at seven minute pace? Um, I mean, I think the, the upside of it is, is that, it, you know, right now he doesn't have to think about it. And is it, if it does get hard for him, the treadmill is still going to force him to run at that pace. So he can't just sort of accidentally or mindlessly slip off the pace. So um, I think that may come into play as, as we get farther along here and, and things get tiring. Like he can keep just have the treadmill setting the pace for him and force him to keep his legs moving at that speed. Yeah, it's I, I would assume it's physiologically easier, but perceptually harder 
to be doing sure. what what he's doing. I mean, I think I think that's fair. If you're looking, uh, both you and and Tim, you're looking at his at his pace right now, at his stride. I mean, that looks like Zach Bitter's stride. Yeah, I was gonna say um, it's very smooth. So yeah, it's just that's just kind of what he does. I mean, he's been going up and down a little bit. I I, I what are the other metrics? I want all these metrics uh, to look at. I would love to know what the temperature is inside there. Um, is, you can see they've got a big air conditioner. They've got a fan going, but those machines create heat too, especially when you got two of them. And uh, I mean, his body must be, you know, yeah. must be, uh, perspiring a lot. And I'm, and I'm real, real curious uh, what, what it's like in that, in that room. If Nicole can hear us and could fill us in on that, that would be uh, that'd be great. Yeah. I know when I've run on a treadmill in our clinic, we have, um, you know, a, a thermometer there and or a temperature gauge and I can see it creep up as I've been if I'm in there for yeah. an hour or two. Yeah. So you know nine hours in, whew, I would imagine. And I wonder I wonder what it smells like in there. It's gotta smell like hell, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gotta be horrible. Uh, um, a wash down after do they have a Febreze sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have all sorts of weird sponsors after this. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh, Tim, what Dan and I were talking about also is is uh, what's going on with you know the world right now on shutdown and uh, what are you doing about the hair? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I, I, I it's been growing for two months, so it's getting kind of long up here. But uh, I I'm just letting it go. Like oh. my last race, I I had a haircut the night before, so and that was right before the world shut down. So thankfully, I got I squeezed one in. So I'm good for about six months. Is that right? Okay. Are you running uh, Cape Town? No. No. Do you have well, I don't think anyone. Is. Oh wait. Oh, Cape, Cape Town. Town is December, November. Yeah. So I I have I penciled that in last year. I've been trying. Stu and I've been trying to connect for a number of years, and maybe this will be the year where you know things could actually happen. But at the moment, to be honest, I'm I'm not planning on anything just because yeah. I think that the rest of the year could look the way we are right now. And I just don't, you know, I'll pencil things in, but I'm not going to really get my hopes up or committed to anything. This this may be the year that CIM absolutely blows up. If CIM happens, it could be a hell of a race. California yeah. National Marathon is traditionally the first Sunday in December here in Sacramento and uh, may be the first race of the year or the season or whatever we're calling this bizarre time. Pam, what about you? Uh, well, everything that I had on my ca calendar was canceled. Um, the big one for me this year was supposed to be the 100 kilometer world championships yeah. in the Netherlands. And they yeah. were one of the first, I mean, they canceled very early on that one. Um, so yeah, and I don't have a lot going on. Um, doing just virtual races more for the motivation of it rather than the competition of it. And uh, honestly, struggling a little bit to find my stride this time because it does feel weird uh, to like be in a, a major training regimen when you have nothing to train for. So it's, it's uh, so weird. So, so I've been very up and down in terms of my weekly mileage and where I feel like I've been at and uh, dealing with a little bit of a hip niggle injury thing. And so then some days I'm like, screw it. I'm not going to train at all. I'll just take yeah. a month off. And after three or four days, I'm like, no, I'm going back. I'm going to start running again. So yeah. uh, I, I'm not as regimented and I, I don't really have a regimen at this time because I don't have anything uh, really yeah. in the foreseeable future. Yeah. That's, I, I think, I think Zach put this together pretty quickly. I mean, the S fuels and the, the whole team kind of put this together quickly. Hey, nothing's going on. Let's do this. Let's go for a world record right now. Yeah, well, Tim, I admire, Pam, yeah, go on. I was gonna say I just admire him for doing so and for some, finding something to uh, replace kind of the void that we've all felt from uh, not having any of these these races and um, having something to take that fitness and put it towards. Are you working now? We've got two medical professionals on. Tim is well, a physical therapist. Pam is a physician. Are you are you both working? I was furloughed for two oh. months. Yeah. Oh, there's it's Nicole. Nicole, can you hear us? Hi, Nicole. And Nicole, what are we asking? What are we? What are we asking, Nicole? I want to know how hot it is in that damn. Place. I want to know what it smells like. Yeah. So, in terms of the temperature, it's seventy-four degrees in the house right now. So, just because it's so hot outside, unfortunately, we're not able to cool it down more than that. We try to. Um, do everything we can. We have an additional air machine in here 
but it just won't go any lower because it's so hot. And it actually does not smell bad in the house, which I am so thankful for because that was- You could not get that out. So, <laughs> Nicole, you're crazy. I'll bet somebody walks in that house, they're gonna, they're gonna keel over. You're just used to it. This is like the frog in boiling water, yes. I think. You know, the smell level is just ratcheted up slightly, slightly, slightly. <laughs> paint's peeling off the walls, Nicole, come on. This is my reality right now. I've gotta be positive. <laughs> like, we're in it to win it, so. That's hey, when, great, but when Zach is doing something on his on his machine, what's he doing? I mean, every every few minutes we see him adjusting. Is he adjusting music? Is he adjusting his pace? Actually, so that's a really good question. He's going and adjusting his pace. So he and Jeff actually talked about this. And when Jeff was on the um, on the program earlier, yeah. he was that was the big debate. But he has been alternating his pace a lot throughout this. So we took the advice of um, Jeff Burns, PhD. Which right, is to, to have the, to have him two sets. We set don't separately. doctors in this house. So Pam, we would certainly, and Tim, I, I don't know, um, but we definitely want to listen to the advice of the doctors. So. Are, are you saying where he has the two machines set at different paces? No, so what he's been doing on his own machine is alternating yeah. pace. Um, okay. So he's been alternating and so just adjusting his cadence throughout the process. Um, in terms of the machine, it's it's more just to ensure that they're cooled down, just yeah. because it is so hot here and it uses so much power that it's just really careful. So yeah. he's been trying to just ensure he didn't um, have a, an issue with the with the actual end result. Yeah, yeah. So That's thank you a... all. Sorry to interrupt. Thanks, Nicole. No, fantastic. Okay. Thanks. I'm wondering if he's if he's adjusting. I mean, based on on effort. Or if he's adjusting based on just has something set where it's he's going to change it up every every ten minutes or something. I'd like. I guess that it's probably just a preset. Like, oh, I'm going to go up and down three, you know, three point three, something like that, just to switch yeah. it up. Which I, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. All like like Jeff said, you know, save your save your energy and you're utilizing your muscles in a in different different capacities. So. It's, it's smart trying to reduce that, uh, you know, quick or overall fatigue that he's, he's going to be really experiencing. I think, too, that that might help mentally, because if you have, say, set 10 minute blocks or 15 minute blocks or something like that, it sort of breaks up your time while you're on there. And so you have something to kind of count down towards and, Look oh, only to. five more minutes until I'm and those, that's a lot easier to sort of get your mind around then okay i've got another 25 miles at this pace or whatever so you know just to chunk it down that that's and that's got to be the, the the such a hard thing i mean you know from timed events or from or from the last person standing events that unknown or that 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 big giant number of time that huge amount of minutes you're looking at just messes you up mentally i mean it, it just screws with you yeah I'm a big one to think of it in minutes rather than to think of it either in hours or in miles. Somehow that, and again, it, it's just a silly mental trick. It's no different. They're all equal, right? But uh, somehow that makes it easier for me to stomach. No, he's 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 looking great. I mean, I, 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 I God, I don't want to jinx Zach at all. I don't know the last time Zach went after a world record and and missed it didn't, didn't hit it i mean yeah you know i mean zach zach is pretty darn good at this he knows his body he doesn't just jump at something unknowingly unwittingly and he's yeah he's, like he's, gonna get he's a tough dude <laughs> it's ridiculous it's it's uh oh, there we go. we're back hey Kristen. We've got, we've got that qr code eric you already made your donation so yep so uh, yep. you've got that part done. Um, for those out there that haven't done it yet, you can take a quick snapshot of that QR code and it will take you directly to Fight for the Forgotten's donation link on their page. Um, they are still striving to get that $10,000 match. I'm not sure of where we're at yet, but I will um, get an update on that to see, to see where you're at for your standings against Dawn, at least, Eric, so you know that by the time we're done. Cool. <laughs> Congrats to our winners that have got the product pack from Eskules, reach out to us on social media and we will get those out to you as soon as possible. We do have a, um, oh, I guess we've got the Nordic track up as well. Um, that is still going until Zach reaches 90 miles. So get your 
registrations in for that, you go to their social media page. I believe it's on their Instagram and it will tell you what to do there to get entered in that. It is going to be the top of the line X32i incline trainer. Um, you can get all of that vert in there from the privacy of your own home. I mean, I, I would much rather be in the mountains, but you know, <laughs> we're on lockdown, right? So yeah, I think so. All right, we do so. have Travis joining us. He is our spotlight runner. Um, hey guys, how's it going? Hi Travis, thanks for joining us. Yeah, so happy to be here. This is a historic moment to be taking part in, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you are, are you still planning to do um, a 10K with Zach? I'm sorry, say that again? Are you planning to do a 10K today with Zach? Yeah, yep, so. Let's see, I'm uh, I think about a mile and a half in so far. Awesome. So. Yeah. Where is Travis? What part of the country is Travis in? I'm in Chico, California. Oh. Yeah, Chico! Tim! <laughs> Did you plan this, Tim? Yeah. Okay. Which street are you on? Yeah. I am on, oh man. You better get over to Bidwell. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, I'm, I'm on my way to Bidwell Park right now. Yeah. So awesome. I'm right by Chico Jr. I uh, so almost at the park entrance. Nice. That's such a great place to run. Oh, That's I miss such it so a great yeah. city. Damn, beat it. And weather's perfect right now. It's Chico can get a little too hot. <laughs> we were just in the 90s a few days ago, but nice and cool and pleasant right now. Well, Travis, you're not locked in a room with two treadmills buzzing right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are doing an awesome job. I will let you get back to your conversation. See you back in 30 minutes. Thanks, Kristen. Bye. Thank you. It seems like it seems like one of the main questions that people get, and I'm talking mainly people who aren't obsessed with this type of event, is, oh, my God, it must be so boring. He's staring at a wall. Why isn't he at least watching TV? Um, what would you be watching, Tim? Uh, I'd probably be watching The Office. It's over. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I could do that over and over. Yeah, and I mean, there are plenty of seasons you could crank through. Twelve easy, twelve hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Pam, what would you be watching? Yeah, I, or I like listening her, to. I like Arrested Development, but I have to tell you that during this um, uh, lockdown or stay at home, whatever, I got into a little bit of the smuttier side of TV. So I did watch oh Below. I did watch a couple seasons of Below Deck recently. So. <laughs> I don't know what that that's is. That's an embarrassing admission. What is, should I ask what Below Deck is? No, you shouldn't. It's horrible. Okay. Um, it's, it's a yachting show about uh, like petty drama and stuff that goes on in a yacht. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's a show about. It's like reading People Magazine in the sauna. You need something completely brainless. Yeah. 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 I don't, mm. I, I am surprised to see Zach without something in front of him. I am yeah, surprised I, to see that. He should be at least watching Gossip Girl or Grey's Anatomy or something. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I, I am surprised. I mean, I remember the other Zach, when we were talking to Zach Miller years ago when he was still living on the cruise, on the cruise ship and he had his treadmill, he would always choose the one that was facing the ocean. Not the one that was facing the TVs, but the one that was facing the ocean. And, uh, and I was like, that's so weird, you know? And he, it, it allowed him to just kind of get into a, get into a zone without having to think at all. I guess that's basically like watching a, a blank wall. Yeah, because the ocean's not doing a lot, but Zach, Zach needed that to kind of turn his brain off. And maybe that's what uh, Zach Bitter is doing as well. I'm not, not entirely sure. Yeah, he's in the flow state. Uh, he, I mean, you'd think you would start seeing some degradation of his stride or his form or a head tilt or a arm drag or something. And he's- Are, are we sure it's not actually just on a, a little loop and he's like hanging out on the couch? We are, we, we have talked about a moon landing scenario going on to this is just a soundstage yeah. in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I, 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 I don't think so. Zach is, I mean, I, 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 I'm nowhere near Zach, but uh, when he used to live here in Sacramento, um, I would be on the, on the, on the, on the trail running. I always thought I was running pretty well. And uh, I would hear somebody behind me, Hey, Eric and Zach would just, just toast me and I'd say where are you going and he said you know I'm going to Beals or something and Beals is you know 25 miles away <laughs> he's a he's a he's a different different type of athlete with a different type of training regimen it's really really cool to see 
I'm really glad to see that they have the two treadmills though. They're about a decade ago, uh, Lindsay, myself, and some, uh, some of the Aggies were at this um, fitness conference in San Francisco where we had a treadmill challenge. Mm -hmm. And after running basically the five minute pace for a couple hours, we broke the treadmills yeah. and they, you know, they couldn't yeah. hold up. So it's wise on their part to be prepared for that and alternate it. Yeah, that's that's one thing that that he he was talking about is <laughs> when I was talking to him a few weeks ago, he said mentally he's ready, physically he's ready. They're just trying to stress test these machines and make sure that they can stand the heat in the room and the sweat because they've never been sweat they've never been tested uh, stress tested for uh, for for twelve hours at this pace and and all this type of stuff. But uh, Zach may have found a new job. He may have found a job as a as a treadmill stress tester. Um, yeah. So I know there was some online talk ahead of time about these treadmills having a built-in shutoff on them. So did they have to um, do some modification to remove I that? Know. I don't know. I don't. I, I, yeah, I every 60 they... minutes, it just shuts off and he has to start over. <laughs> and, and he just keeps going and just runs into the thing. And <laughs> that would actually I... make for pretty good TV. <laughs> it would. It would. I, I, I don't think that's the case. So. Okay, Tim, you get to drop off now. I'm going to chit chat with Pam for a bit, and then I think we're going to have uh, another guest in a few minutes. But uh, Tim, so nice, nice, nice to join you. Uh, All right, to seeing you. Yeah. Probably see you in December. Take care, man. See you, Tim. See ya, yeah, Tim. Say hi to Lindsay. I'm looking for another shot right here. No, he's still looking. He's still looking great. What what I don't, I do not know, and I admittedly don't know, is what the female hundred mile treadmill record is do you have any idea pam i don't and i was thinking to try and look it up and then i thought why am i even thinking about that there's no temptation there so i i don't ah. know what the comparison is ah, well let's see here if i could figure uh figure that out. i don't i don't know the record um i i i know that the 24 hour was set just recently like last year the year before i believe in europe but well, I and I know, know uh, Edith Versus, I think from Hungary, did a lot of treadmill running. Yes. So she may have um, some records there. Let's see here. That's all about Zach. Um, I, it's, I don't, I'm not going to have time to go through to go through all that all that type of stuff right now. There he is drinking again, and I don't know if he's drinking. Um, and he's, I'm assuming he's drinking S Fuel's uh, liquid. I don't know if he's doing it uh, on a on a on a time based on his Koros or if he's just drinking when he's thirsty, or if Nicole's sticking her head in and saying, why aren't you drinking? Yeah, um, I'm sure everybody would love to know his fuel plan exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, I, I would, yeah, I would love to have him, have him mic'd up and really be able to hear, hear everything, but uh, it's, it's, it's good enough watching, watching this. Um, so, okay, back to, you said you're furloughed for two months. Does, what does that mean for you? Does that mean you get to train a lot, or does that mean you sat around and tackled home projects? Yeah, a little bit of both. Like I said, the, the training uh, was kind of on the back burner a little bit. Uh, mileage was mostly normal, but not doing a lot of the uh, harder workouts and definitely not getting to any trails and stuff. I don't have any uh, right out my back door. So it's all roads. Um, and then, yeah, doing a lot of home stuff and gardening. I have a big garden that I was taking care of and That's right. got a couple of goats and some chickens. So doing kind of all the farmyard stuff. And then I do have two kids, which are like two additional farm animals to take care of. Uh, they're, they're both teenagers. So um, they have like, a, they need their own feeding trough too. So uh, <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Um, my husband's a teacher. And oh, we got a progress update, Pam, real quick. We got a yeah. progress update. Let's see where we are. in nine hours and 22 minutes let's see here what are we looking at looking just about the same i mean he's that the trajectory is a little bit higher a little bit towards towards dave's uh 1232 i mean i by all indications x going to get this in in 22 miles don't want to jinx him but it's looking pretty solid and his heart rate is down again yeah it's interesting yeah. i wonder why that happened uh because he slowed down a little That's bit a little the last yeah. yeah the last check we had he was at 149 BPMs and it's 701 minutes per mile. So his heart rate's gone down, but and his pace has slowed a little bit. I don't recall seeing him go to the bathroom in the past 20 minutes or so, but I may have looked away and 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 missed that. Um, still looks he great. Has I mean, been on. yeah, he still looks great. I don't know. Yeah, and again, I don't know how far the bathroom is away, but he's 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 looking looking great. 
Are you doing the sourdough thing? Are you making sourdough like the rest we, of the world? We did it and we're done with that already. Oh. We've already terminated that project. But uh, yeah, we made a couple of loaves. It was fun. And then we finished with it. You know, I, I, I try to, I try to, <laughs> to relate a lot of things to, to ultras and to training and stuff like that. And um, I built a brick wall a while ago and it was kind of like ultras, you know, it's methodical and this and that. And and sourdough, I, I really wanted to find those comparisons, and it, it, that sucks. It, making sourdough bread is too much damn work. It is it is so much work, and it's so much better just having a friend who makes sourdough bread. We kind of concluded the same. We can get them at our local uh, bakery for about two bucks a loaf, and said, yeah, let's just keep doing that. <laughs> so. Uh, we just got a note. Um, Eat it, Bursies from Hungary has a fourteen fifteen um, on the the four hundred miler that she set in twenty oh four. Okay, so I got the person right. Yep, yep. At fourteen fifteen, dang. Yeah. Pam, what did you run at Desert Solstice in what was that twenty oh twenty thirteen? 2013. So I I ran a fourteen uh, eleven there. Um, but then at dawn to dusk to dawn, the D3, a um, couple of years later, I ran 1409. 1409. So, yeah. That's, I, I, well, now, I mean, now, obviously, you've got me thinking about, about what, what you could do on a, um, on a, on a treadmill, because those no, are so similar to the record. I don't think I could do that. Well, when I could do that now, I'm older. Well, and, and you don't <laughs> want don't to. And if you don't want to. Anymore. Yeah. And, the treadmill just, mm, I, I know I've done them on the track, but that just doesn't draw me. No, and if you don't want to, then you're not going to, there's no way you're going to sustain that. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, this is something you really, really have to be passionate about. And, uh, and Zach, Zach loves us. We, we were saying before, yeah. it's really cool. You know, I'm we have a lot of athletes. Yeah. And we have a lot of athletes in the sport who, um, who dabble in, uh, uh, track stuff and mountain stuff and trail stuff and, and all these different things. And Zach did a bunch of them and just really, 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 really honed in on, on, on track stuff and, and now treadmill. And it's cool to see somebody really just drill down into, into one discipline and uh, he's killing it. Yeah, this is, this has really been his, uh, the zone, the hundred mile thing and the flat running. He's, he's really just been, I mean, he's obviously made a name for himself and set the world records at it. So this is his thing. Cool. Okay. Well, Pam, thank you for joining me. It's a uh, four 30 now, which means Zach's been doing this for nine and a nine and a half hours. Nine yeah. and a half hours. Good and, um, keep it up, I, Zach. I will see you in the future at some point, whenever it's so weird not knowing. I mean, usually you can say, I'll see you at this race or I'll see you here, but nobody knows what the hell's going on. So. Something. Well, thank you for the invite, Eric. It's been uh, a pleasure to be a part of this. Thanks a lot, Pam. I appreciate it. Take care. Take care. Bye now. Well, it looks like uh, looks like we may have cut off a little bit early because I'm not sure that we have another guest right now. So it's just going to be me chit chatting about this, and um, and and trying to watch Zach. I if there's any chance that Nicole could open up a mic and just I don't want to ask Zach any questions. I would just like to hear the treadmill. I kind of get a kick out of hearing. For some reason, I can I can gauge speed a lot better if I can hear that that uh, that belt moving. If not, that's not a not a big deal. Well, it looks like we're going to open it up, and we'll, we'll we'll hear that going in a few. Oh, Kristen's back. And I. I think by my estimation, we're, I can't hear you, Kristen. It looks like we're around 80-ish miles, 78 or 80 miles or so. And I know that they're giving away a big, fancy Nordic Track treadmill at 90 mile mark. So uh, if you want to get in on that, what's that? So that is true. 90 mile mark. If you want to get in on that, head on over to, uh, to the sites. I'm sure it's linked below and make a donation. And, um, there we go. I just want to yeah. hear that thing buzzing. It's, it's loud. It's, it's a good, it's just a, a slight background noise. How, uh, 
how often does Zach train at home on a, on a treadmill? You know, he had He's, never trained before right. this event, so this is really new to him. And so, this is a new sound. Yeah. Yeah, the, the furthest he had run before this event was 30 miles, but it had right. only been a couple of weeks before. So right. what's a uh, what is without without jinxing him or messing him messing him up mentally? Uh, what's what's your guess? What do you, how do you think he's doing right now? For his time. Yeah, just his. How does he? Is he acting? Is he emotionally? Oh, well? sorry, I just wasn't able to hear. No, I think he's really solid. Um, okay. I think he's really in a good headspace. I think um, initially we had some issues with our. Um, just the power in the house, the power source. So I think now we have everything figured out. So it's making things a lot logistically easier. But I, I do think he's really in a positive state of mind. So. Well, he's, uh, he's, he's, it doesn't look, I mean, we're joking about a moon landing scenario. It doesn't look like anything's changed. He just looks no. like he did nine hours ago. Yeah, he's really in a steady state of flow. He just keeps kind of powering through it. You can definitely tell um, that it's getting harder. Um, there's, there's definitely that willpower that's kicking in at, at this point. But he seems really solid and um, he's just been really on a roll for the last couple of hours. So definitely good for a crew. When he's drinking, is that based on an alarm? Is that based on you? Or is that based on just when he's thirsty? He's telling me when he wants the fuel, but he's taking estuals every hour or so. So um, he has a bottle. And he, he has put together the mixture. Um, and so I just, on command, give him the bottle. Um, and he's also using a product called Community. And that's obviously helping him with the caffeine from that side. So he seems like his stomach's doing really well at this point, which is always a good thing with an ultra. Um, so I think coming in for the last couple of hours, he could be set. Uh, how did he sleep last night? He said he slept well. Just of, of normal, just normal sleeping. He doesn't wake up freaking out that he's taking on a world record. No, he's actually amazing. He's an amazing sleeper. So he was just out pretty early. I think he went to bed at maybe eight o'clock and then woke up probably at four thirty. He was just ready to go. Um, yeah, no coughing and turning from what he said, and that was a consistent with that. So what did um, he eat this morning? Um, you know, actually, I was going to ask him that myself. He was up before me, so I did not see. Um, so that's a good question. I can get the scoop on that. But I'm not sure. What does he usually eat before a hundred miler? You know, a lot of times he'll have some kind of nut butter that he really yeah. likes. Um, you know, like that that would be traditionally he probably have meat. He he sticks pretty much to his his typical protocol. And then he's introduced carbs obviously during this whole event. But usually he eats really high fat and then on his he's doing different things. So that's a good question. I was curious about that too. Because he sometimes mixes up his breakfast before he leaves home. He looks fantastic. Is he is he listening to something on his headphones? Yeah, he might be listening to the program. Um, What's he? If not, what what kind of music is he listening to? You know, he put together a whole variety of music last night, so it really ran the gamut. Um, I think he had some rap and some probably um, hip hop. It was kind of all across the board. I, I, I love I love the answer to that question because it is never what I expect. Right. It's, it's like uh, uh, you know Casey Lichtig is. This. Eighty miles. So that's good. Eighty miles. So, He's looking at his watch. Yeah. So he saw that, which was a plus. And is this what you would expect him to be at eighty? Oh, he's stopping. I actually think he might be using the bathroom. So. How, how we, we we're talking about all sorts of go on. I'm just going to switch off the treadmills because this is yeah. a good time. Yeah. 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 So this is part of my job description. So I can't have a job. Oh, 
I guess the bird is on. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 